Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we'll be answering a question that many of our fans have asked in our comment section. And that's, what's a good hero pool to have? Okay, so the first thing to consider is that it's best not to look at this too linearly. Approaching your hero pool should not be approached in terms of take two from each category and you'll be fine kind of mentality. The problem with that is that the categories don't properly appraise each character's skill set and only very loosely band heroes together in a way that isn't actually helpful. I'll use an example. How much in common do the skill sets of Mercy and Zen have in common. Even in function they're quite far apart and have different uses, but the skill sets required to play them are also vastly different. The categories have them both as support, but to play them you have to have vastly different mechanical skills and contextual game sense. Because of this it's best to break down heroes in terms of the skills they require and work from there. So when looking at heroes in a different way, what are some of the categories that either they have in common or separate them? Well let's break it down. Some heroes across multiple categories share the fact that they are primarily projectile characters. Utilising projectiles is a skill set that not everyone has experience with, and because Overwatch brought many different players from many different games together, it's no surprise that to some people, projectiles are an alien concept. Characters like Farah, Hanzo, Genji, Lucio, Zenyatta and Junkrat all make use of them as a large part or total part of their kit. Some other heroes make partial use of them. Characters like Mei, Soldier, Symmetra and Torbjorn. So if one of your weaknesses is that you have little practice with projectiles as a concept, it might be wise to try and find a hero of that category that you can practice with and improve on. But what if you're good with projectiles but it's hit scan that is the gap in your game? Well characters like Soldier, McCree, Reaper, Tracer and Widow all make use of that skill set, so learning the principles behind it would potentially open up all those heroes to you. I've just covered two skill sets and already I've mentioned quite a few heroes. You should be able to see the logic of learning skill sets instead of heroes by category. So following on from that, as the player you need to look at your own game, establish where your strengths are and what are your weaknesses. I'll use myself as an example for the point of demonstration. I come from an almost exclusively hitscan background. I played Call of Duty and CSGO for years, so I very quickly went towards heroes like McCree and Soldier. They are in some ways typical of each game. McCree needs to tap headshots like CS, and Soldier is like a COD character transplanted into Overwatch complete with sprint, self-healing and a noob tube. With such limited experience, a lot of the heroes were seemingly walled off to me, making use of skill sets I had either never developed or avoided with mistrust and suspicion. Projectiles were something I actively avoided due to my lack of experience and because of that I became a very inflexible teammate. So what did I do about it? Well I decided to get to grips with a projectile hero. Not one that was so crucial like Farah, but one with other utility other than raw DPS. I decided to learn Lucio as his gun is a 4 burst projectile. Now his damage output is not the crucial part of his kit, so my ineptitude wasn't as vital as it would have been with Farah. I slowly but surely got accustomed to leading shots and improving my projectile game, all the while learning some vital game sense lessons playing a healer and a hero that came to be incredibly meta. The Ryan Lucio speed boost is something that I would never have had the understanding of if I just stayed as a hitscan only player. From there I moved on to Zenyatta, a character who requires projectile skill, game sense and has to make use of headshots too. So you can see by learning a skill set, many new doors open, not just the one hero you learn. So as the player, appraise yourself honestly, find the gaps and then set about learning what skill sets you need to. So where's a good place to start? Well it's never a bad idea to start with the most dominant meta heroes. By that I just mean the heroes that have become the most common because of their overall utility is simply more applicable than some others. A short list would probably include Lucio, Zenyatta, Reinhardt, Zaya, with Mercy, Diva, and Winston being very close to, if not actual bona fide meta heroes. Now each patch and balance rework can shift heroes in and out of meta hero status. The best example is probably Widow who at the start of the game was one of the most dominant heroes in the entire game, but she's fallen away considerably since being nerfed. Now remember what I said about skill sets? She's a hitscan skill shot hybrid. So excellent Widows probably had transferable skills into other heroes like Soldier, McCree or even Hanzo despite him being projectile based. You might have noticed in the short meta hero list I mentioned I didn't reference any DPS. That's because widening your hero pool as a goal should have understanding the game and improving your game sense as a motivation. It's all about flexibility, especially in solo queue. You never know who you're going to be matched up with, what skill sets they themselves have or don't have, so you need to be able to flex pick to get the best out of them. I'll use Frido as an example. Many of you have rightly noted his excellent Widow play, but you might not know that he has the widest skill set pool of anyone on the channel, closely followed by Weagle. Because he understands and can utilise projectiles, hitscan, tracking, movement and more, he can flex pick incredibly well. That is a great place to be as a player. By having such a wide pool, he also understands and can make use of many of the synergies in the game. His Zaya can combine excellently with a Genji and shield them when they harass, or he can use Winston to dive with a Genji to devastate a backline on initiation. The key is having 
with a wider set of skills so you can make the right decision at the right time. As a general occurrence, you could say that the Overwatch community struggles with non-standard FPS skill sets. There are a lot of players who can utilise hitscan and nothing else. Well, so much of this game will remain out of reach if you as the player allow that to define you. There are many characters that have very little to do with traditional FPS on the surface. Reinhardt is an almost exclusively positioning based character. The skill set is about patience, baiting out what you want to see, and then executing a fire strike or charge at exactly the right moment. There's very little raw aim involved. The same could be said for Winston. His skill set is all about movement, initiating at the right time and using cleave damage instead of aim to disrupt multiple targets concurrently. What these examples tell you is that Overwatch is not purely a fragging game, and if you approach your hero and skill set pools as if it is, you will struggle. In summary, the idea of widening your hero pool is not a bad one. However, like I've detailed, it's best to look at widening your skill set pool instead. This will open up a much wider pool of heroes to you rather than just hard-headedly learning two supports, two tanks and obviously Hanzo. Learn the different skills, learn the synergies available and you will become a much more flexible and knowledgeable teammate and a much better player overall. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please don't forget to leave a rating. If you'd like us to talk about anything specific please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I've been Eddie the Chump and until next time!